Okay, so this is a follow-up to our possum shooting where we were missing at 150 odd yards due to the ballistic settings. This is the ammo that we were using, CCI subsonic 22, as you can see, 1050 feet per second. That's what it says on the box. Now, that's not what it's really doing out of the rifle, and there's something hinky. We know the ballistics work, so it's something to do with the settings that we've got. Now, I'm going to show you how to do it without a chronograph. Now, I do know the answer, because I have a lab radar. So I do have the exact, exact answer, and I tell you what, it ain't 1050. Let's go and check the target, though. Okay, so this is 50-odd yards. These are the shots here. This is the aiming point. So we know the rifle and the ammunition are accurate. We know that it is zeroed correctly. There is five shots in there. I can also tell you that through the lab radar, we know the extreme spread and the standard deviation. So I've got an extreme spread of 19.9 feet per second. That's over five shots. And a standard deviation of 7.35. So the ammunition is accurate in this rifle. That reflects the target. So let's work this out if, as if we didn't have a chrono. Okay, so there's my settings as from the other night. So 1050, bullet weight's obvious. The BC I attained from the internet, actually a book. It's not often published. So your main two biggest variables that we're going to look at is your velocity and your ballistic coefficient. So the first thing you're going to do is just take a simple target, a box, a bit of core flute, paper, anything, and place it out as far as you want to shoot. Right, so here we are at the target. Now, using the BC I already found in a book, and 1050 on the box, this is where we're impacting. This was my aiming point. Really only concerned about the line, not the wind drift, just the line. A little bit of wind coming through, and that's enough to push the bullets. But what we're concerned about is the drop. So this was the first group at 1050. Now I happen to know what the velocity is, so I corrected it. And because the bullets were higher than where I was aiming, they have to be going faster. So the simple rule is, bullets are higher, they are going faster, but it's really easy to remember is, bullets are lower, going slower. It's quite rhyme. There you go, learned something at school. This was the second group. So I corrected the speed to what a lab radar said. And you can immediately see, because they were going faster, we're now closer to our point of impact, or point of aim. Our point of impact is closer to our point of aim. Then I've tweaked the BC, because this is a known figure. Shouldn't be messing with known figures. At this stage, nothing was known, really, other than the box. So we increased, because we were still higher, means the bullets are going faster than what the system says. So you need to increase the BC, because supposedly they are cutting the air better. So I increased point zero, uh, yeah, point zero 0.02 of BC, G1, and we dropped from here to here. Now this is at 159 yards. I've tweaked it a little bit more, and we're almost there. Now that's, we're talking about a thumb, two thumbs high at 159. As you can see, we were four, six, about seven inches high, so bullets going past his ears. Now we're not, we're a lot closer. Ideally we'd like to be splitting this line. So what we're gonna do now is, I could continue to correct this and we'll get it correct. I would only be adjusting the BC up slightly, another 0 0.01, 0 0.02 until it's splitting. But what I'm going to do is, this is a known velocity, chronographs can measure muzzle velocity. Some chronographs can measure BC. Now they require receivers at the other end. I have one of those, so we're gonna scientifically calculate this BC. So tune back soon. So if we enter this into a ballistics calculator, we can see there's three separate traces. So they're upside down to the target. So the red is actually my first one, where I took the 
box velocity and the book BC. Then I corrected the velocity to the labrator, that's the green line, and lastly the blue line was the corrected velocity where I've been tweaking the BC. So how does the science match up with the real world? Well if we look at our first group, my ATZ MOA is 2.91 inches high. And if you take the difference between trace 1 and trace 3 being the correct one, 17.29 minus 14.6 is 2.69 MOA. So actually, pretty close to 2.91. Bear in mind, we've got a group size of 0.86, so it's certainly within the group size. And looking at the second group, we have an ATZ, which is adjustment to zero, of 1.63. And if we take the 1567 minus 14.6, we've got 1.07 MOA difference. So slightly more, but bear in mind there is that outlier fifth bullet there. Again, the real world is matching the science. So we actually proved the point. And there we go. We're actually trued or calibrated for this rifle and ammunition combination. Now, Labrador was saying it was doing 11.15 average. We know the 11.21 actually broke the sound barrier. So it's not the ideal subsonic ammunition for this particular rifle. So it is going to be very, very close, depending on the conditions, to the sound barrier. Nevertheless, we have done it. And coming up, here's a quick summary of how you can do it yourself. So the first thing you will do is zero your rifle at a suitable distance. You must be able to shoot good groups at the zeroing distance and as far as hunting wise, not for long range, that you will shoot to. You must be able to group at this distance as well. First thing to do after that is put a target out and mark a horizontal line on the target that you can see from your shooting position. Now in your ballistic settings in the menu, you will enter the velocity and the BC of the ammunition, plus the other details such as your scope height, temperature and altitude. The BC, look it up from the manufacturer's website. The velocity, take from the box. Now if you have a chronograph, the velocity is going to be a known figure. You take the figure from your chrono and you do not adjust that. You will only adjust the BC value. Now if you don't have a chronograph, that's fine. The BC will be the known figure in a way because you would only adjust the velocity value to do this calibration. Now shoot at the target at the distance. Be sure you get the range accurate. Any bullets going higher are going faster, and the simple way of remembering it is, slower is lower. So if the bullets are lower than your horizontal line, they are going slower, so you will decrease the values. If the bullets are higher, you will increase your value, so you'll either increase the BC or the velocity. Not both, you'll just wind up chasing your tail, just do one figure or the other. After you've done your adjustments, either higher or lower, and you've got the bullets splitting the horizontal line, you've done it. Always fire some test groups to make sure you're not looking at an outlier or a pulled shot. And this is only really recommended for hunting ranges, this is not for long range shooting. Velocities and BC are both known amounts that can be measured 